I would like to welcome you to the future. Well, kinda. It's kinda already here, kinda not, always moving forward. Anyway, this post is about design and technology. I am gonna take you behind the scenes to a place very few people have ever been. First, let's talk about this design I have beside me. It's very futuristic and doesn't seem very realistic, not at this point. However, fast forward 15, 20 years from now, and it might just be possible. A design concept like this one is based on what type of technology we're going to have in 15 to 20 years. The job of a designer is actually quite hard. They have to try to estimate what type of technology will be innovated by then and available to use by mankind. In many ways, I think the future is already here and now. Here's what I mean. Our machines are being equipped with more and more technology of today. For example, let's use the next gen hex. They have grade assist, e-fencing, a bunch of different features that helps the operator, makes it safer. All of that is simply impressive. But what's even more impressive is the technology used to design, engineer, and build these machines of today. Cat, unlike any other brand, they have the power to do everything in-house. They're using VR, they're using 3D printing, augmented reality. Using these technologies drastically speeds up the whole process. It also gives them time to focus on their standard of quality. Now we're at the cool part. We're inside the CAT design center facility. I forget the name of it. It's very hard to get into, but we got in. Here's Connor, he's wearing the VR headset. Using the VR headset, you can change and sculpt the machine. You can change the contours and the dimensions of the body panels, engine doors, everything really. Let's use an engine door for example. If you change the contour of it, that affects, or it might affect, the inside of the engine compartment. You can now go in, look at every angle to see if the new contour has an indentation that is closer to moving parts of the engine. To the right hand trigger, you can start drawing in space. And I'm gonna predict that the first thing you're gonna try is to write your name, because that's what everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> that's unreal. It is. So like an 11 millimeter? What is that? Uh, 10 to 20. 10 to 20. Are you doing video? I should shut up. <laughs> now we're in a different room of the facility called the Caterpillar Cave. The coolest thing, coolest place I've ever been. It is the only five wall VR room cave in all of North America. It's called the VR Cave but I think it's a cross between VR and augmented reality. It combines VR with the real world. You're able to go sit in the seat and be in a VR world at the same time as the real world. It allows you to go in the machine before it's even built. You can sit in it and you can look around. You can, you, you try to grab the steering wheel, but it's not actually there. You can see the dash, you can see absolutely everything. A big thing this cave is used for is testing the ergonomics of the machine. So the placement of switches and joysticks to actually try to see how far you have to reach for a joystick for it to be comfortable. Having this option is actually mind blowing. The most amazing thing about this cave is while you're in the cab, you can zoom in past walls and compartments to get on the other side and look around. It's like you turn into a little tiny human and you're placed behind the dashboard. You can see where the wires are. You can see where the bolts are. If you need to take it apart, you can zoom in and to see how it's built so you can unbuild it. Amazing for troubleshooting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's better to walk in. It's better to walk into the geometry than the screen because the screen yeah. is considerably more expensive. So yeah. just walk, walk right in and, and just grab hold of the chair and just sit down. 
Most people grab hold of the chair because, yeah. It's, yeah, that is. <laughs> Did you like the cab or what? The operator inside the in the cave will work to move their heads more slowly. That means people watching around the world are here. They're, they're able to get a, a it's a, it's not quite as um, obviously jerky for them, so they can understand and see. And so that's the only thing we generally ask is, okay, as you're going through this, if you have any viewers or anywhere else, just kind of move slow through your gaze. That way, it's more consistent. 